There has been a dramatic rise in cases of aspergillosis in recent past. Though we inhale spores of aspergillosis with each breath, but it affects only neutropenic patients or patients with chronic respiratory diseases. Some patients also manifest as allergic. Clinicians need to become aware of this type of septate, highline, dichotomously branching hyphae, which are seen in aspergillus along with some other highline opportunistic fungi. This smoky gray green colony is of Aspergillus fumigatus, which is the most invasive and most pathogenic species of Aspergillus and a nightmare for hematology units. So it is an angio invasive highline mold, and these are four important commonly isolated species out of more than 250. Aspergillus species. Aspergillus fumigatus is responsible for almost 70% of invasive infections. Aspergillus flavors, which is usually associated with sinusitis, it produces yellowish green colonies. Aspergillus tiger is seen with otitis externa, and colonies are salt and pepper in appearance. And Aspergillus tedious is inherently resistant to amphotericin B and it is increasingly being isolated with typical cinnamon buff colored colonies. The spectrum of disease with this pathogen is large. So allergic along with colonization, superficial and semi-invasive and invasive disease. Allergic manifestation is seen usually in patients with already uh, suffering with asthma or cystic fibrosis. The incidence in severe asthma is 1 to 2 percent and in cystic fibrosis it is 2 to 15 percent. In cystic fibrosis it is seen in late adolescent or young adults. In asthma usually patient will give history of coughing out brown mucoid plug like expectorant and there is a series of remissions and exacerbations which leads to pulmonary fibrosis and it has a prolonged poor prognosis so it's important to identify it the diagnostic criteria for abpa is obligatory and others among obligatory it is total ig uh, is elevated more with more than 1000 nanogram per ml and elevated Ig for aspergillus fumigators. So these two elevated total Ig and elevated uh, aspergillus fumigators specific Ig. These two obligatory tests both should be positive to identify ABPA at some places even skin tests can be used and other criteria is total eosinophil count more than 500 and elevated aspergillus igg and of course radiographic abnormalities uh, will be there superficial cutaneous infections otomycosis is uh, uh, increasingly observed with uh, swimming and otitis externa uh, is presented by aspergillus niger Keratitis is usually seen with trauma or uh, ocular surgeries and uh, catheter site infection with uh, adhesive tapes has been reported along with outbreaks. Colonization is often known as aspergilloma where it is a fungal ball uh, which is a dense a collection of hyphae present in a pre-existing pulmonary cavity or paranasal cavity and though it is non-invasive it is associated with heavy hemopsis in some cases uh, which can be fatal and the surgery to remove fungus ball also carries many complications Invasive aspergillosis is typically seen in neutropenic patients or where neutrophil function is compromised. So 
patients on chemotherapy, uh, patients of hematopoietic stem cell transplant, uh, solid organ transplant, especially for lungs, uh, and hematological malignancies. Uh, they are the patients with largest representation with invasive pulmonary aspergillosis. Next is ICU admissions, corticosteroid use, TNF alpha antagonists, Kappa and VAPA we have recently come to know. So uh, COVID associated pulmonary aspergillosis also earlier we knew it is also associated with influenza uh, and chronic granulomatous disease. Again, wherever neutrophil function is affected. So their patient is susceptible to invasive pulmonary aspergillosis. So here usually it is seen after 10 to 12 days of profound neutropenia. There is fever, cough, dyspnea despite antibiotics. But usually physical findings and laboratory findings are non-specific and they lag behind the pathogenic process. And therefore in these cases life-threatening hypoxia may occur and signs and symptoms are usually masked because of corticosteroid use. So CT chest uh, gives a typical uh, feature of multiple nodular lesions and hello sign is an early sign and air crescent sign is a late sign where due to NGO invasion uh, there is ischemia and necrosis. In hello sign there is along, uh, around a nodule there is a hazy opacity ground glass opacity is seen around the nodule so this is known as halo sign and with the recovery of neutrophil the air crescent sign is seen remember this can be seen with other NGO invasive fungal infections as well like mucorails fusarium pseudosporium and even in some bacterial infections Non-neutropenic patients manifest with airway invasive growth and their uh, diagnostic criteria as well as symptoms are non-specific. Tracheobronchitis is very commonly being noticed and it is very common than realized. Uh, it is uh, seen after viral pneumonias, in AIDS patients, in lung transplant patients along suture lines. And there are non-specific symptoms and chest x-ray findings. So a high level of suspicion is required and diagnosis is by bronchoscopy where pseudomembrane with ulcerative lesions is seen. So biopsy and galactomannan assay and culture will help in reaching the diagnosis and aerosolized amphotericin B is used to treat it. Disseminated aspergillosis carries very high mortality in these patients, almost 50 to 90 percent. The most high mortality among all fungal pathogens and it is as well as most common invasive fungal infection. In 10 to 20 percent of invasive pulmonary aspergillosis cases, uh, CNS is involved and there is ring enhancement lesion in cerebrum and it is difficult to uh, differentiate it from many other ring lesions and biopsy is required. Fortunately, 30 percent of these cases respond to voriconazole. It is also seen in immunocompetent patients which are uh, uh, IV drug abusers. The other site in disseminated infection is bones, especially lumbar vertebrae and intervertebral discs are not involved in contrast to candidiasis. Surgery may be required and voriconazole is effective. The other manifestation of disseminated infection is cutaneous involvement. There is usually a necrotic also with rapidly spreading erythema and it resembles pyoderma gangrenosum. 
so simple biopsy of the skin lesion will confirm the disseminated disease chronic pulmonary aspergillosis is more common than realized and it's very important to identify it in uh, developing countries where it is missed as pulmonary tuberculosis undiagnosed and patients are put on antitubercular therapy it can coexist with tb in up to 10% of cases it can also occur after tb and after infection with uh, environmental mycobacteria sarcoidosis and copd patients so there are two manifestations chronic cavitary pulmonary aspergillosis and chronic fibrosing and necrotizing pulmonary aspergillosis both have progressive uh, disease with known mortality incidence in icu patients is 1 to 12% and it is because of either underlying respiratory disease corticosteroid use or compensatory anti inflammatory response syndrome galactomannan assay from bal will rule out colonization which is equally prevalent in these patients recently it has been realized that in viral associated pulmonary aspergillosis the incidence is higher it is 8 to 25% and we have seen many mortality uh, in uh, uh, covid associated pulmonary aspergillosis in recent past diagnosis so microscopy is with the help of histopathology where typical dichotomously branching regular highline septate hyphae are seen but we cannot differentiate them with other opportunistic highline molds only at times in aspergillus teres elluro conidia these are uh, sessile conidia present on the hyphae they can be seen in tissue uh, it is diagnostic and sometimes aspergillus niger forms oxalate crystals in tissue so on microscopy these two can be identified on these basis otherwise it's difficult without culture to identify the aspergillus it is a rapid grower on routine culture media and colonies form within 2 to 4 days from sterile sites and ball uh, it's not difficult but from other sites it can we have to rule out colonization and contamination from the environment and remember fruiting head will be seen only in aerated lesions like pulmonary lesions or wounds it will not be found in uh, cns lesions any abscess aspirated from cns or vertebral bodies uh, and if if it has a fruiting head that means it is a environmental contaminant blood cultures are rarely positive especially in aspergillus teres speciation and antifungal susceptibility is very important because of uh, increasingly reported cryptic species which are resistant to commonly used antifungal agents and the speciation is done by sequencing Galactomannan is a screening test in neutropenic patients to institute uh, uh, the therapy, uh, preemptive therapy, and beta D glucan is a non-specific antigen test. Combination of tests help in identifying the cases. Invasive pulmonary aspergillosis is an emergency and it should be rapidly diagnosed within 48 hours. So, bowel sample is collected and galactomannan assay and PCR are done uh, from the sample. Chronic pulmonary aspergillosis is diagnosed by bowel galactomannan assay along with serum IgG. and in aspergillus bronchitis culture pcr and igg will be positive so we know galactomannan assay 
is dependent on patient population and antifungal prophylaxis. So if patient is on anti-mold prophylaxis, then its sensitivity decreases. PCR has greater utility than galactomannan assay in BAL. It is more sensitive and more specific and serial positivity increases the specificity. So uh, there is prevalence of azole resistance due to use in agriculture, uh, which was 1.726% in late 1999 in aspergillus fumigators. Multi-azole resistance is reported in Netherlands, Europe, India, and Asia. And with the help of molecular techniques, mutation in CYP51A gene can be detected, which indicate azole resistance. Different mutations can manifest resistance to different drugs. It's important to note Aspergillus terius and some cryptic species are inherently resistant to amphotericin B. Treatment guidelines according to Eatsa and Asmid, Voriconazole is the drug of choice because it has superior survival rate. Another drug is Isavuconazole, but it is very expensive, but it has a very few side effects like shortening of QT interval and less number of drug-drug interactions in comparison to Voriconazole. For ABPA, itraconazole can be given for 16 weeks along with tapering dose of corticosteroids. In high-risk patients, prophylaxis is given with posaconazole delayed release tablets. It achieves very high concentration, especially in respiratory epithelial cells. Itraconazole is recommended in chronic granulomatous disease patients. There are several reported outbreaks in hospitals with construction activity or renovation. So infection control risk assessment form should be filled before any such activity and barriers should be put. Regular maintenance of air and water systems in the hospital are required. Protected environment for hematology patients is protective but later on they do end up with community exposure and community acquired pulmonary aspergillosis. So with newer dog diagnostic modalities and therapy it is very important not to miss these patients and identify them and institute proper therapy especially uh, CPA, chronic pulmonary aspergillosis, is missed as undiagnosed TB and patients are unnecessarily put on antitubercular treatment. We need to create local epidemiology with culture, speciation and antifungal sensitivity. Thank you.